Many of us fantasize about giving up the day job, escaping the rat race, and following our dreams. For thousands each year, that means opening our very own hotel or B&B. We just thought, let's run away and do it now. <laughs> we saw this view and we were like, wow, this is what we want to slice up. At home and abroad, brave Brits are throwing themselves in at the deep end. This is our guest cave house. I just want everybody to feel like a princess in a castle. I've worked in hotels for over 20 years, but this is the story of six brand new hoteliers. Yeah. I love it. This time, a new couple move in together to create a luxury B&B in Devon. For one curtain, this has ended up being £800. I'm not going to see it behind the door. But it's, too, it's far too big, and I just don't think that works. This is so frustrating. Doing my head in. Look. What have you done? I'm sure there are days when they would love to kill me. There's quite a lot of angst around. Year-old interior designer Zoe Calvert and 57-year-old businessman Keith Hutchinson got together three years ago, but so far the couple have lived apart. I would say, because other people have said this, I was probably doing my delayed midlife crisis, deciding at my age what I wanted to do going forward. My dream has always been to have a beautiful property on the coast somewhere but I wasn't sure how I was going to do it. And I didn't want to do it on my own either. So I met Keith and uh, we chatted about our dreams and aspirations. We were then thinking about were there opportunities for us to do things together. And the opportunity they've spotted is this. A dated guest house in the Torbay fishing port of Brixham. Have you ordered the balconies? A bit worried about the chandelier now because the ceilings come down that much lower. The wallpaper I'm looking at is quite expensive. Oh. Keith has taken redundancy from his job with a multinational and together with Zoe, they're taking a huge leap into the unknown. It's funny how you can see a slight in the ceiling there, can't you? selling each of their properties in the home counties and moving in together for the first time to refurbish and run the B&B. On the middle is where we were going to have what do you call the knobs for the shower? Shower knobs. <laughs> when we walked through the door, our first reaction was, oh, God. I could see straight away that there was going to be a lot of work to do. This is one of our beautiful dual aspect rooms but I just fell in love with the view. This will be lovely. And even over the rooftops, it looks lovely, especially in the evening when all the lights start to come on. And they plan to buck the local trend for family seaside breaks. I'm trying not to go for the family market. So no bouncing on the bed, cos you might hit your head. OK, I'll remember that. And I love children, don't get me wrong, but I want to use beautiful fabrics, silks and so on, so if a cute little five-year-old wipes chocolate fingers over my curtains, I'm not going to be very happy. The couple are putting in half the money each and have paid £400,000 for the property. They're budgeting 150000 to convert the tired eight-room guest house into a four-room boutique B&B. They expect to charge from £100 per room per night, up to £130 for their feature room that will come complete with freestanding bath. Building work began in January, and to start recouping their investment ASAP, Zoe and Keith plan to open in May, just four months away. Hopefully this, in another month, this will look totally transformed but the couple are risking far more than their money. The worst thing is what it might do to us. Um, yeah. And that was, you know, that, that's probably our biggest fear, 
because... 24-7, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's the first time we've lived together. And in this environment. But, yeah, we quite like each other, don't we? <laughs> yeah. Really? yeah. yeah. And, and therefore, excuse my French, but sod it, we're going to go for it. Nice trip. Good bed. Right. That's not all ours, is it? I believe so. Is it? I've only got the one drop today. Oh my god. <laughs> At least I can realise what we're paying for now. It's February and £22,000 worth of new windows have arrived on site. This is the first time I've just seen the window frame. That's a great big thumbs up because at least they look like I envisaged they would look. Today, the key part of Zoe and Keith's plan begins. To exploit the view, they're replacing, enlarging and even cutting new windows. Is it going OK? Oh, look! we got another window! So this is the main bedroom on the middle floor. Well, this is the ensuite, and it was rather dark, but now we've got the new window in. Oh, we've actually got a view as well. Brilliant. So these are the patio doors, what will be for a Juliet balcony on the outside. The first time I've seen them. And they work. Hooray! The couple are dividing responsibilities during the renovation. With business-minded Keith looking after the budget and the builders, while interior designer Zoe is in charge of the decor. I'm going to put a mood board together for the bedroom that's on the top floor to know that we're both agreeing on the same design. I suppose the style I'm going for, I'd say, is... Um, Classic contemporary, if that makes sense. Key's quite modern, and I like the classic, so I'm basically combining the two together. It's proving a little bit difficult getting Keith to, to like what I've chosen. For one curtain and a blind, this has ended up being uh, just under £800. And Keith said, what are you going to do if you've got guests that don't look after it and pull it back and you get marks and things all over the curtain? And he's got a really good point, but if I have to think of that as well, what am I going to end up with a fabric? It's not going to be a boutique hotel. It's going to be plastic sheeting or something, you know? I can't think like that. So. What are you doing? What do you think? No, I don't mind. Tony, yeah, in terms I think of the decor nice. stuff, yeah. I mean, if you, uh, you feel it's the right thing to do, then... I think it'll look nice. So, that's on budget, that's on budget, that's on budget. Yeah. It's just those. He did say from the very beginning Zoe's in charge of the interior design, but that is not the case at all. Things like the log-burning stove, I wanted a real fire, and he said, no, it has to be a log-burning stove, so I said, OK, we'll go for a log-burning stove. We'll have a headboard in front of one part of it, and we'll have a bath in front of the other, and we'll probably have um, mirrors on there. Yeah, it's quite elegant, but it also looks quite old. Yeah, you think it looks too traditional? I think it looks quite Victorian. It... You're not going to ask, don't you? The price. Yeah. Well, I want to see if you like it first, then, then we'll have a look well, at it. Well, you know how my brain works. It's almost <laughs> not, <laughs> it's no point first. in looking at it if it's stupid. The couple are hoping their high-end B&B will bring them an income of £40,000 in their first year. But for now, their living conditions don't match their aspirations. Living in our building site has been uh, a little bit of a trial. We probably, not so much take it out of each other, but we can't really ever go anybody else. <laughs> so there's almost a default that goes, no, well, and it gets a bit, you know, and then it dies down. So we decided that we're managing it by... <sighs> so it's learning about each other, learning how to work it out. So. If I wanted him to take the rubbish out, I have to do it in a different way. Let, I'll put the rubbish, maybe I'll put it in front of the doors so he can't get out of the living room without <laughs> tripping over the rubbish, then he might move it. So I've just got to learn how to get my way. But it's a, it's a slow process, uh, but yeah. I will find it in the end. That's a funny one, because do you need to get your way? Is that what it is? It's just different. Anyway.
despite only having met three years ago and never having lived together, Zoe Calvert and Keith Hutchinson have pooled their money and bought a dated eight-bedroom guest house in Brixham for £400,000. They're converting it into a luxury, couples-only, four-bed boutique B&B that they're hoping will stand out from the crowd. <coughs> By March, it's been repainted. Not in the traditional ice cream colours of the fishing town, but a bold, uncompromising grey. Looks great. I've actually got an inward smile because it's now starting to take the look that I envisage it to be. I'm thinking we made the right decision, particularly the right decision about the windows and the contemporary look. They've decided to call their new B&B Driftwood. And in order to take advantage of Brixham's busy holiday season, they want to be open in May. That's just six weeks away. Wow, look at this. What a difference, eh? Unbelievable. We've just had the window taken out and the old sliding doors. Uh, and we're putting two lovely big sliding doors in to replace it for our guests. They can come straight out to the terrace from the guest lounge. With more than 40% of Devon's holidays taken in the three months of June, July and August, it's important that they cash in. You probably can't Sorry. see it because it's my Camera. touchy screen. There's a broken that? bit. All that? Yeah. It's only about that the much. The frame that a, needs to be put in there is In there, it's a broken damage. frame. It's damaged and it needs to go in today. So I'm going to go to the window company. But the problem is it'll be at least three, four weeks before we get a new one. Unbelievable. Well, I think you have to do it, but then they're going to have to take it all out again. Oh, no. Why, honestly, why, why, tell me why I can't? It seems to be key softness outside because it's so noisy and dusty inside. So there he is outside in front of the house, ranting and raving to the um, window suppliers. The former businessman and interior designer are getting a rude introduction to the hotel business, and their May finishing date is already looking unlikely. He's getting really fed up, because if we need to replace anything, I don't know how long it's going to take. So when people say, when are you going to open, it's out of our hands. When we want to open and when we're going to open are so different. So frustrating, but I'm glad that he deals with all the problems because I would just probably end up bit crying or something and you need to be strong. And their original £150,000 renovation budget has already gone out the window. Initially, we were thinking that we'd only need to put probably two to £3,000 worth of soundproofing into the property. Our circa £3,000 budget is now getting towards 30 grand. It came at 23,000 pounds for the electrics and we allowed three, so we're 20,000 out there. What's depressing is what's left out of that is for me to do the pretty bit. So far, the couple have had to put a further 50,000 pounds into the pot. It's not just the money. It puts you under pressure as well. It means that, you know, some of the conversations you then have are a little bit more fractious because it means so much. And then when you get faced with some quite significant bills that are going to come through, and you're not even going to see a benefit for that, it's just going to basically be in the fabric of the building, keep it standing and the rest of it. Mm. That's, that's quite a shock. And it does, you know, it takes its toll. You know, we've been probably more fractious with each other than ever before. Just have to learn to cope and walk away if it gets too upsetting. And there's still a big question mark over Keith and Zoe's concept. Brixham has long had a reputation as more of a fish and chips resort than champagne and oysters. But Keith and Zoe are convinced it's headed in the direction of its more illustrious neighbour. Salcombe, Britain's most expensive seaside town. That one that's quite elegant, but it's modern as well, isn't yeah. it? Which is, as I say, classic contemporary. That's the sort of look. Zoe's daughter Harriet is visiting from Manchester, so they're both taking the opportunity to check out the competition and get some design ideas. Very 
pretty. It just smells so expensive, Harry, doesn't it? It does. This is what your b and is going to smell like. Let's hope so. <laughs> Probably not. Probably be fish and things. I love that shade, though. That beautiful. Yeah, it's really nice. I wonder if you can buy just the shade. <laughs> When opening any hotel, it's essential you get the measure of your rivals. Have you got a table for two? Two for lunch? Yes, and please. The least, South Sands is one of Salcombe's most successful high-end hotels. So, Harry, be honest with me. What do you think of the property? I think it's looking great at the moment. Definitely a lot better than the last time I saw it. What about the colour grey that we chose on the outside? Mm. Do you think that's a bit dark or do you get why we've gone that way? No, I love it. When my mum first told me she was going to Brixham to buy a BB, I was a bit shocked and to move away with Keith and they'd never really lived together before. It's a great thing to do and it's coming along really well. I'm very impressed so far and they're not um, killing each other yet. You know, we do get very niggly with each other. But, so, yeah, so he might have had a chance to miss me by the time I get back. Yeah. Anyway. Let's hope so, anyway. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Is there any chance we could see some of your lovely rooms? Uh, yes, certainly. Lovely. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. This is amazing. <laughs> Isn't it? That lovely. <gasps> Gorgeous. The hotel's J-class rooms are £385 per room per night in high season, including breakfast. That's the bed, Harry. Look how big that is. Whoa! That's wonderful, isn't it? That's yeah. got to be over six foot wide, hasn't it? Yeah. Wow. Beautiful. So two baths. You have a his and a her bath. Views to die for. Oh, wow. That is beautiful. Don't slip over. Wow. Can you imagine on a sunny day? Oh, my God. Wow. What a view. Absolutely stunning. Uh, it's very interesting to see this room because I think it's absolutely beautiful, but I don't think it's any more beautiful than our rooms, the way we're going. It's larger. It's got its own private beach, but decor-wise, it's um, a beige wall and it's got wooden doors. I think it's good for my mum to come and view different places to see what the competition is. And it's promising. It looks like my mum's taste is slightly more sort of new, a bit moderner. I think I'm being a little bit braver with mine and I'm not going down the seaside route. I'm doing a bit more boutique than they've done here. So that's quite nice and reassuring, really, because there's no way we'd be charging the same price they're charging here. So I think you get a lot more value for money with our little place. And hopefully it'll be just as lovely by the time we've finished everything. But Zoe's design ambitions and Keith's attitude to the finances aren't always a match made in heaven. We went to choose the cloakroom furniture this morning and Keith said to me, have you stuck with the budget on the bathrooms? So I pulled a face because I didn't realise there was actually a budget. It can be a little intense and there's naturally a little bit of friction because we're still fairly new with each other and it's working that through. So I'm sure there are days when Zoe would love to sort of, um, I was going to say, kill me. I don't mean it that way. Um, and uh, I haven't got quite wanted to kill her, but we, we are quite strong-willed people in our own rights. All along, she's had this dream and vision of what she wanted to create. And basically, I'm pulling a little bit of the rug from under her. However, Keith's come up with an idea that he thinks will keep Zoe happy without breaking the bank. Oh, Lee, how you doing? Hi, Keith, all right? Morning, yeah. Wow. Looks pretty good, doesn't it? All right, thanks. Yeah, what do you think? Do you know, the great thing is, it looks bang on. Keith's had the idea of getting Lee, who usually sprays motor vehicles, to customise the centrepiece of their flagship room. That looks bright silver on there. Just sort of put it up against the bath. That's sort of what you're going to get. Yeah, that's going to be great. When Keith came up with the bath and said what he wanted doing, I was a little bit uh, apprehensive, but uh, I've sprayed lots of things, motorcycles, cars, and all sorts, 
Well, it's no different. The couple had been looking at buying a cast iron bath for upwards of £3,000. This bath was £1,600 and will cost a further 170 to have it sprayed. And to be fair to say that Zoe's first requirement, I think, when she started looking at these things, because this is integral to her, was going to be a cast iron bath. This is an economical and a practical way of getting something that will look very high quality with a great finish and fulfill the needs we have for the decor within that room. I'll get out of your way now. Yeah, no Thanks problem. indeed. I'm really excited about it. A luxury hotel is all about the fine detail, and although keeping control of the budget is a vital job, Keith and Zoe will need to be careful that Driftwood B&B doesn't end up more bodged than boutique. Zoe Calvert and Keith Hutchinson are following a dream that many Brits share. Moving to the coast and opening their very own B&B. But so far, it hasn't been a smooth ride. I think that's fine, that size. If that paints up all right with nice handles on it. Yeah, I just think it's... Um, yeah, whatever. Yeah, well, I don't know. The couple have never lived together before, and they're faced with a spiralling budget and slipping schedule. Yeah, well, I don't know. We'll paint one for the office and we'll see. But that, that was how I, I thought you're not going to see it behind the door, and then the tea and coffee making. Well, I, I, there, but it's, it's, too, it's far too work. big. I don't mind it in our stuff. Mm. I don't think it should be in here because you've got all these modern lines, then you're going to go and put those doors in there. And I just don't think that works. Working together as a couple is a notoriously tricky enterprise. In a small business like a B&B, there are so many areas of crossover that it's very difficult not to step on each other's toes. Finding a way of coping with the pressure is going to be key to the survival of Zoe and Keith's business and their relationship. I really need to get out today, I'll tell you. It's doing my head in. Fortunately, building a business is about more than decorating. Zoe and Keith will also need to forge links in the local tourism industry, and one such opportunity is giving them a rare break from the strain. Hi, Dave. Nice to meet you. Thanks for doing this. Brixham is famous as a fishing port. Dave Saunders runs excursions for holidaymakers and could prove a valuable ally. We try to work hand in hand with the bed and breakfast. Come on, baby. Come on, I'm here. You know, fish like silence. Oh. <laughs> I'll speak to some of them throughout the year, leave my business cards with them, and I do the same for them. I've got various bed and breakfast business cards on here. I have never held a fishing rod in my life. You never know, I might get hooks. Hey! <laughs> It's a reciprocal thing, so they give us work and I try to give them work as well. Have you had a more hopeless set of people on this boat? No, not really. Oh, oh that's disappointing. Well, we try harder. <laughs> but for now, any business Captain Dave sent their way would be wasted. With no clear completion date, they can neither advertise nor take bookings. The build, we keep finding little things that we need to do more on. That's quite disconcerting because, to be fair, there is a little bit of stress and worry now about the timing of things because we are finding, as I say, lots of other little bits and pieces we need to do. And then those bits and pieces are then stopping other things being done. We had said hopefully opening in June, but I'm not thinking that's going to happen. Oh! <laughs> oh, bless him. Oh, he's lovely. Yeah. <gasps> oh! No, please, please don't do that, cos I will go overboard. For now, at least, the fishing trip is a welcome reminder of why they're undertaking the project. Brixham was beautiful from the sea. 
very advised. Oh, it's lovely. Yeah, very pretty. I know Keith freaks out a little bit with how much money we're spending. But, you know, you're a long time dead, so you might as well spend the money while you're alive. Keith does bring me back down and say, oh my God, it's an extra however much, but we knew it was going to be expensive before we started, and I just think it's, it's definitely going to be worth it. Back on dry land, one of Keith's economies is about to be put to the test. Now we're going front then. You all right, Lee? Yeah, just about. Zoe has always wanted a freestanding bath as a luxury feature for the B&B. Nobody even pretend to drop it, all right? By buying a cheaper model and getting the local car body shop to spray it, Keith hopes to have saved more than £1,500. I'm very excited to see what it's going to look like. So I just hope it's exactly what I had in mind. A little bit nervous. The bath now looks like rubbish. It's going to be a real disappointment. Dun, 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 dun. The big reveal, you ready? Three, two, one, go! <laughs> oh, wow. Good? That was lovely. Spot on. <laughs> it's going to sit in front of that. That looks nice, doesn't it, with it? See, again, we're going for the classic contemporary. That's why we went for this, because it's a bit of both. It's that style that's very classic, but it's contemporary because it's happening now. Very nice. Clever man. But are Keith and Zoe's compromises good enough to match their five-star aspirations? With so much at stake, they're getting an independent view. Good morning. Hello. Hello, I'm Zoe. Nice to meet you. Lovely to meet you. A work in progress, I take it. Absolutely. Kevin Wilkie is an assessor for quality and tourism and as such sleeps in over 100 establishments each year. So if anyone knows how to keep the customer satisfied, it's him. So he's coming to let us know what we can do to get a five-star rating. We thought it was probably good to get it at this stage um, because if we get him at the end, it'll be too late to do anything about it. So this is a lovely bedroom in here. And this is where we're sleeping, but at the moment we've only got a mattress, but... Right. Assessors have a minimum list of requirements that they expect of any B&B, and to achieve a five-star standard, most elements need to be considered excellent. Yeah, the attention to detail is great. I think drenching showers or the rainforest showers are supposed to what people like. Yeah. They like to, because you don't necessarily have it in your own home. This is the same as upstairs. Yes. Duplicated. But the good thing about this room is we've just got planning permission well, you can get for balcony. balconies. Oh, oh, lovely. To sit here in the morning Imagine, with, that with view, a coffee. With that view. This would be ideal. That's a classic twist on what you would expect Victoriana to be. And that but, is lovely. Well, really this is, you see, I'm effect. calling it contemporary classic. It's yeah, the style yeah, of I this property. That. Because I love classic. Keith yeah. likes contemporary. Oh, yeah. And this is the guest lounge, basically. Great. Come and have a look. This is yes. what sold it to us. Oh, good grief, yes. Look at this. It's a sun trap, isn't it? It's lovely I mean, in the morning. I, yeah. it, in the morning, uh, we lose it about five o'clock in the afternoon, so it's perfect for bed and breakfast. Exactly. And this is where they're going to have breakfast. See, this is very light and airy as well, isn't it? It's amazing. Superb. I would say, from what I've seen, excellent. And excellent equates to five star. Now you have the potential to get to five star. And the reason I'm emphasizing potential is obviously I'm not seeing it in all its glory. But what you have put in so far, including your flooring, the attention to detail, the quality of the fixtures and fittings, yeah, they're all superior and that's what it needs to be. You know, I, I wasn't quite sure what I was expecting when I came here, but your enthusiasm, the way you bounce off each other and your eye for detail is great. So it'll be really, it's going to be a smart place. I'm very impressed. Are you? Yeah, this is an impressed look. No, oh, good. 
Torbay's going through a uh, resurgence, if you like, and Brixham is very much key to that. And Brixham has got an awful lot of old character and charm, and I think if they've got the right uh, area, and if they market it correctly, this will take off. But the good news is short-lived. By the beginning of September, four months after they'd hoped to open, Zoe and Keith's plan to cash in on Brixham's busy summer season lies in tatters. Keith, would you mind putting the curtain pole up, please? Because I painted that a little bit. The white kept breaking through, so I don't know if it was because it was sanded too well. So it needs a second coat. That's in the cloud. Well, it will need a Chester. second coat because it's, yeah, because it just soaks it up otherwise. Do you not put a mist coat on first? No, not for that little area. No. No, it just needs a Can't second. No. It. no, that's only on bare Can't plaster, darling, it. not on well, filler. Well, it was. The filler's bare plaster, isn't it? But anyway, yes, the answer is yes. When? Now, if you can. Missing the peak holiday season has potentially cost them up to £20,000. It's so frustrating. It is really peeing us off. There's quite a lot of angst around because it's just gone so slow. My biggest angst has been about the cash. It's cost substantially more than we imagined it would do. We've probably ended up spending, certainly, in addition to the, the cost of the purchase, certainly two, two, maybe two, 225, something like that, which is probably another 50 grand easy on top of what we envisaged we were going to spend. So that's a fair old whack. However, a friend of Zoe's booked in for her honeymoon months ago, and there's no turning back. Obviously, we're still not ready. We've still got builders in, uh, which is very frustrating. So they are staying with us, but I don't feel we can actually charge them. But if they can give me some constructive criticism, that's going to be really helpful, and that's what I'm hoping they're going to do. She may be a friend, but accepting guests at this stage is by no means risk-free. Beautiful day, isn't it? To add to the pressure, newlyweds Julie and Alistair have spent the week sampling some of the West Country's most renowned high-end establishments. We had decided we wanted to honeymoon in this country and, and do it very nicely rather than be limited by suitcase weights and stuff. Come through, Julie. This is your room. Oh, it's so pretty. And then a while before the wedding, Zoe had said that this place wasn't going to be ready, but that if we wanted to come uh, and, and not pay, uh, that we could have it as a kind of a, a guinea pig thing. So having just been to two very nice B&B hotel type places, we thought we'd be able to be a good time to give us some good feedback. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, that's very nice. Wow. So I'm really sorry, Alistair, because I wanted to put you in here, but I haven't made the curtain yet. <laughs> but that's what I mean. Sleep in there and come and use the bath, yeah, the facilities in here. Please do. Perfect. Gorgeous. Because we're on our honeymoon, we've done the really special things, so they've got quite a bit of competition. We've stayed in some gorgeous places. Still from, full from Rick Stein's breakfast this morning, so in Padstow. So uh, we're looking forward to seeing how well they do compared with the top places down here. Beautifully done, look at that. After the newlyweds luxury road trip, Driftwood will have an awful lot to live up to. But have Zoe and Keith got the measure of the market? And can they ensure the guest experience at their hotel matches their high ambitions? Ultimately, their success depends on it. It's September in Brixham, Devon. And so far, the opening of Zoe and Keith's dream hotel hasn't exactly gone to plan. Despite Driftwood B&B still being rough around the edges, the couple are hosting their first guests. I hope I've remembered everything. 
Zoe's friends booked in months ago as part of a honeymoon tour of luxury West Country establishments, and she didn't have the heart to turn them away. She's offered them a freebie in return for some constructive criticism. But will Driftwood be special enough after their special day? Should I put the glasses up with the orange juice in? No, they might not want orange juice. This morning, the pressure is on to produce a breakfast that competes with those the honeymooners have experienced so far. I've got Julie, you'll want to be on the right, because that's got the best of you. It might come back to bite me, this, but it's not rocket science. I'd like some orange juice and some coffee, please. Breakfast is more often than not the last impression guests get of a hotel and frequently their abiding memory. It's action stations. If you want good reviews or return custom, you have to at the very least match their expectations, preferably exceed them. Yep, it's looking good. It's always a fine line. No matter how good the breakfast is, it must be delivered promptly. Yeah, it's 20 minutes, so I'm hoping it'll be out there no more than 30. Oh, bloody hell. 30 minutes is about the maximum that any guest should be kept waiting for their breakfast order. Mm. 30 minutes. Serving up. Serving up at 30 minutes. Would Sorry. you like me to spread the toast and things, Kim? Can do. Please don't fall off. <laughs> what have you done? Nothing. That is a plateful, isn't it? Yeah. After 35 minutes, breakfast is finally served. We need to get slightly bigger plates, so good luck with this. So that's the first one out of the way, which is good. And um, we'll wait and see now what um, feedback is. Keith did a good job, but we still need to do it quicker than that. I think he needs to um, ask me to help a bit more. You know, as I say, like cutting the bread, spreading the toast, anything I can do, because we do need to bring that timing down. Don't panic, Keith. Nothing wrong with it. He's just absolutely full. So you were right about one sausage. You see, it would have been plenty. Oh, cool. Yeah. Julie, totally gone. Well, the good thing is you're still alive. Yeah. We are. So, lovely. come on, how was it? Very nice. I, honestly. And that was just enough for me. That yeah. Was yeah. Really nice. Yeah. OK, cool, cool. It seems the breakfast and the whole B&B are a hit. The other two places we stayed at were both very much hotels, and certainly the bedroom here compared very favourably. I'm conscious that there is another room that's got a freestanding bath, which we had in the first place um, that we stayed, and it would go head-to-head -head with that, I'm quite sure. It's a welcome boost for the beleaguered Zoe and Keith. And little more than a month later, the transformation is complete. The once uninspiring and pokey eight bedroom guest house has become a light, bright, and trendy boutique BB. It may have taken five months longer than planned but they're at last ready to launch Driftwood. It's uh, an important moment for us, really, and a big sigh of relief, quite honestly, as much as anything else. They're throwing a party for the great and the good from the local tourism industry. I'm a little bit nervous about today, with everyone turning up, all our competition, all the other B&B owners, so I hope they're not disappointed. I'm feeling all like, which is a very strange feeling. Hello. 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 How are you? Yeah, you must be Georgina. Georgina. Yeah. Hello. 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 Creating a buzz locally is a vital part of launching a hotel. Some of your most important partnerships will be forged locally, so popping a few corks makes damn good business sense. This is oh, Keith and Hello, I'm Keith. Welcome to the business then. This is where breakfast will be. Oh, wow. 
This is fab. We're going to be up the Shard Tower to see views like this. It's fantastic. Yeah, absolutely great views of Brixham. Oh, this is so lovely. Judging by their guests' reactions, Keith and Zoe have pulled off their goal of an upmarket, classy, and boutique guest house. And when you come away, you want to Got to make it. Yeah. I actually own a guest house in the area. I'd stay here. I'd come here for one night to stay here. Yeah, it's fantastic. I'm jealous of the finish. It's great. Yes. There's quite a big boating community. Um, in the surrounding areas and I think they're always looking for somewhere nice and contemporary to stay and I think this just hit, hits the nail on the head really, it's just amazing. It's awesome, absolutely stunning. It's chic, sophisticated, and it will appeal to a totally different market than what Brixton's used to. And I just think they've done it to the highest specification they can. When we opened in Brixton, the guy who had the best guest house in Brixton, which was like a five-star silver, yeah. came and he looked at our place and he said, you know what, he said, you've just raised the bar in Brixton by a hell of a lot. We come and seen this today, and you have taken it beyond that by a country mile. Oh, yeah, it's, lovely for us. Thank you. It's, Thank uh, you. It's superb. This metamorphosis has, however, come at a cost. Zoe and Keith each put in 50-50, initially hoping they could complete the whole project for £550,000. The final total is 600,000, 50 more than expected. But they hope it will pay off. They've created an aspirational product that may well be at the forefront of Torbay's resurgence. And their relationship has survived. Today was probably the first time that I walked into this room and I thought, wow. We've made it. This is lovely. I'd want to stay here, and that's that's what's important to me. You know, if Keith said, right, I'm going to take you away for a really nice weekend, it's your birthday, and I, I walked into any one of those rooms, I'd be blown away. And that's what I want to happen to our guests as well. I've got tears Ooh. in my eyes, look. Oh. I know. But it's been, a, it's been a hard slog, hasn't it? So, it has been a long so hard slog. So I am slog, emotional yeah. now. But we've actually succeeded We've built our dream and we still like each other.